This video is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, welcome back everyone. We are going to do some viewer mail today, but this is going to be a little different because I've actually got two pieces that were hand delivered. A couple weeks ago, I went to Dallas to go see a show at a gallery called Photographs Do Not Bend. It was my dear friend, Keith Carter. You might remember him from the artist series. Keith is, well, he's amazing. He's got some new work he was showing. Anyway, I went to the show, happened to run into a few people who watch these videos and I'm gonna share their work. They asked if they could just hand deliver it to me instead of mailing it in. I said, sure, why not? So first up is this scene, which is called 28. This was given to me by Christian Aguirre. Christian is an excellent photographer, does a lot of street, urban landscape types of work. He obviously is shooting a lot around Dallas and Fort Worth, and there's a lot of places in here that, well, I used to work downtown Dallas for a number of years, and now that I've been to Fort Worth, this is really cool to see, because there's a number of things that I see that are very familiar in here. This is really well done. I gave some of my thoughts to Christian when I saw him in person, but I do wanna make a couple comments on this since I've had some more time to look at it. So first of all, I love the cover in the back with the groovy dot pattern that you see through and the little 28 at the bottom. The other thing that I find really interesting on this, I mean, Christian does some really capable work in here. There's some excellent photographs. The ones that really catch my eye is there's a couple spreads here where we see multiple shots in a sequence. And what's really interesting to me about this is it starts breaking it up and we start to see a story. So Christian, if there's any advice that I would give you on this is I would expand on that idea a little bit. Otherwise, it's certainly a nice collection of photographs, but this is something that starts to tie them together when we see these sequence ideas. So Christian, excellent work. Thank you for sharing. And while I was at Keith's show, I also ran into a gentleman named Michael Clemens who has this book called Colorblind, which is very interesting. He showed this to Keith as well. When you start going through here, Michael does a lot of really interesting things with these color abstracts. There's a lot of really interesting studies here on light and color. And I gotta be honest, when I was looking at this the first time, I kind of thought, where's this going? Until you get to this last page, where it says, I am colorblind. Now, of course, Michael was there and we were able to ask him some questions about this. It's interesting because he is colorblind and he explained, I see colors completely different than you guys do. This entire book looks different than what you guys are seeing. And I think that's a really interesting concept. Michael, my only thoughts on this is I would put that announcement further up. I know the book is called Colorblind and I think it might require just a little bit of text in the intro to kind of talk about that idea because I'm not sure it's real clear because we don't know that you're colorblind. This is actually a really interesting concept because you have this duality to the images that you have in here. They're gonna look one way to me when I'm not colorblind than they are to somebody who is. I think it's a really strong concept and I think it just needs a little more of a nudge as you get into it. And I think some text would carry that. But otherwise, really nicely printed, beautiful images and uh, I really love it. All right, now let's get to some mail-in submissions. So first up is a trilogy of zines that are actually very interesting. These come to us from Brazilian photographer Rafael Grazili who lives in Sao Paulo, and he includes a note which reads, Dear Ted, here is a brief history of Greece photozine. The first edition was born out of my wish to have some sort of printed magazine with photos of my routine during the COVID-19 quarantine. That edition contains photos that represent the way I perceived my days between 2020 and 2021, as stated right on the first page. In quarantine, there are only three days, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There are three quote-unquote chapters, namely Mania, Tarje, and Noiche, morning, afternoon, and evening, that depict the repetition of my everyday life while locked up in my apartment. Despite the relatively poor printing quality, the end result was good enough for me to decide to print out a second edition. This time, I invited my friend, Thiago Sores, to publish some of the many photos we have of our pets, my dog Gora and his cats, Gizmo and Kali. My part also features some of Gora's canine friends and acquaintances. We partnered up and printed a flippable zine to add some play to it. The third edition, just came out in July. It's about ego and the ways that we perceive ourselves. It contains self-portraits from me, Thiago, and other photographers from our area. Best regards, Raphael. All right, Raphael, a couple things come to mind. So first of all, Greece, the first one. You mentioned a comment in there about the print quality not being as you wanted it to be. I actually have to say, though, you did an excellent job considering. I know what you're talking about in here, but a lot of times what happens is when people get into print quality they're not happy with, especially with black and white, it's usually because they're really contrasty and you start losing stuff in the shadows. I think these are all really well represented and I would love to know your process of getting proofs and stuff for these. I agree though, the second two are much better printed, but they're all excellent. I actually really love the layout on these. This is something that I think is worth pointing out because a lot of the stuff that I get in usually needs help in that area. I'm not really harsh on it because most people are photographers and not graphic designers, but it makes me wonder if you have a little bit of a background in that. Third zine, Ego, I think is the one that probably has the most depth, obviously because it's a collaborative effort with multiple photographers in it. What's 
interesting though is the work definitely has a continuity to it, not only in terms of the concept ego, but I think the visual aesthetic. I mean, some of these are very scary. This is very Nine Inch Nails looking in spots and I actually really love it. Very cool, very nicely done. Thank you, Raphael. All right, I have a few more that are really interesting that I wanna share with you guys, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace. Listen, you need a website and we all know how much work that is to build and maintain, but it doesn't have to be. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to build your online presence. It's also the best way to grow a business that works for you without having to write a single line of code. Do you just need a simple portfolio or a blog to showcase your work? Well, Squarespace is perfect. Featuring a drag and drop interface, it's intuitive, it allows you to build galleries quickly and update your site with ease. Are you running a business? Well, Squarespace gives you additional tools for things like appointment scheduling, private member areas, social media tools, and even advanced email marketing. Do you sell products or services? Well, Squarespace has you covered with complete tools to power your store, from merchandising to checkout so that you can sell, ship, and build your customer base. You can even sell classes or manage appointments through your website. And with Squarespace extensions, you can easily sync with third parties to manage, optimize, and enhance your website. From social media integration to SEO, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to grow a business that works for you. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for the free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and see what you can create and just how good you're gonna look. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com AOP and I can save you an additional 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just use the offer code AOP on checkout. So give it a try and see if Squarespace is right for you. And I wanna give a special shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, moving along. Next up is a book called Private Purgatory. This comes to us from Howard Linton. Howard has a note here and he writes, Dear Ted, I've been watching your YouTube channel for several months now and particularly enjoy the weekly mail videos. To be honest, after viewing all the great work that's been sent in, I wasn't sure if I should also contribute. But after much consideration, I figured, well, why not? After all, it's black... After all, with the backlog of mail that you have, there's a good chance that it will never be seen and I'm cool with that. Cheers, Howard. All right, Howard, we gotta have a little chat here. So first of all, we do have a rule on this show that we do not apologize for our photography. Now, you just stopped short of apologizing for it and you weren't sure that I would like it or not. I actually really do. This is a nice little collection of street photography. I like the interesting style you have, a lot of the motion blur that comes through here. It's a really interesting shoot from the hip kind of style. There's only a couple comments that I would make on this. First of all, some of your photographs I know you want them dark and moody, but get a proof on your book before you send it out because I think they get a little too dark and you start to lose detail in those shadow areas. It's just a minor complaint. I like the dark moody stuff, but sometimes it looks one way on a screen and then when you put it on paper, it doesn't exactly carry over the intent that you had to begin with. And secondly, if I could make a comment on this, and this is something that is kind of common when you get into street photography, which is what you're doing here. I love the improvised nature of all this and I love the fact that it's a little loose. It's the shoot from the hip, the motion blur. Some of these though, you've got some really nice compositions going on. There's a couple that I'm thinking of specifically, this one of the foot coming out from under the seat. There's also a really nice silhouette of this guy over here. And then another one that I really like is this umbrella that's coming up the stairs. Composition is really difficult when you get into street photography because you're trying to control all the elements and organize them into something that's compositional in nature. And it's really tough to do with street photography because you can't control the scene. And so sometimes it's gonna be a matter of just maybe cropping. I think there's other instances instances where it gets a little too close to people and I think the camera needs a little more room to breathe. Anyway, that's the one thing that I would recommend you do to, just to be conscious of moving forward. I think it would give your images a lot of lift to it. Anyway, really nicely done. I really like the aesthetic to this and uh, thanks for sending. All right, and next up is this book, which is the Merced National Wildlife Refuge. This comes to us from Chuck Van Rusbach. Chuck has actually sent stuff in before he writes in here. I sent you my first ebook back in 2019. It was a while back and I was tickled when it surfaced out of the backlog and you said nice things about it. I finished production of my latest ebook about a favorite place of mine, the Merced National Wildlife Refuge in California's Central Valley. This is my seventh ebook and I give them away online, but this is my first ebook that I've printed copies of for anyone other than myself since the first one. Each time I produce a book, I learn more about the craft and I think each one shows improvement and I think it is the first I look at and see what I set out to produce and not the places where it fell short. Thank you for the art of photography and for being willing to cover topics beyond the clickbaity beginner classics, helping us understand more nuanced and complicated aspects of photography. Keep up the good work. You continue to be a mentor and an inspiration for many of us. Chuck. 
All right, so Chuck, first of all, you have some awesome wildlife images in here, and a couple things that I would say in terms of critique that would help you get better at this. First of all, look at other photo books and look at things like typography. You have a lot of text in this book, and that's not a bad thing, and I feel like you have a lot you want to explain, but a lot of times the text just kind of competes with the images, and I think part of it is the font you've chosen. I think the font size is too large. I think it can be smaller, use more negative space, and invite the eye to kind of look through the spread. I think that's one thing I would say. The other thing is give your images more breathing room. You've got some really nice stuff in here. And like I said, a lot of times when you have text on the page, like, you know, I know these are geese, but uh, I don't know that I need that there necessarily, but maybe it could be somewhere else. Anyway, I think layout is going to be the biggest concern that I have with something like this. And I know this is super nitpicky, but you have several spreads where you have photos that sit on top of one another. Also not sure about that. However, I really do like your attitude and I love what you said in here about each time you do one of these, you learn more. That's something that should be the takeaway for everybody. It's like, if you wanna learn more about your work, learn more about how it pieces together and how you're organizing your thoughts, I think putting these books together is always an awesome idea. And the fact that you can just kind of do them as eBooks online and have them printed, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Keep it up, I would make layout your next priority because I think the images are there. I just like to see them presented a little bit differently. But Chuck, thanks for sending. You should be very proud of your book. All right. So that's it for mail today. I mentioned Keith Carter at the beginning of this video in the show that I went to go see. I'll link up to some stuff in the show description below, mainly on the show that's up. And then also, if you haven't seen the interview video that I did with Keith, it's not really an interview. It's more like a documentary because I'm not in it. It's just Keith. Anyway, he is amazing. Go check that out. I'll link that up here as well. Till the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.